Bill says, hi, everyone. I'm building an internal SharePoint site. Bravo, Bill, right there at the beginning. I just love to say that. Uh, in our site, there will be thousands of folders. Oh, oh, Bill. Oh, folders? Uh, uh, and files and files and documents, which makes it very difficult to locate files. I have a question regarding that. Is it possible to use the PNP search option in SharePoint to search any file or folder in the documents library, something that will return the target file and folder? Can anyone please help me with this? I'd really appreciate the help. I think it's safe to say all of us here could help with this. Just saying. <laughs> I've not played yeah. with PNP search. I've read about stuff. I've been on calls around it, but I've not deployed it. No, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not even PNP I, search. Let's make it yeah. all searchable to begin with. Yeah, uh, we yeah. don't need <laughs> garbage ahead. in, garbage out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. If it's not returning a result, it's because you've got like too much really going on. Thousands of folders. Well, that, that's part of it, and and I get that. That's why I I, I made a joke about it at the beginning about you know, thousands of folders. Like, uh, no, there's problems right there. But the second part of his question is not just returning the results, but also the folder. So, uh, you know, so it's like a little bit more of a specialized search, not just the result with the end result, but actually one level up the folders, the the immediate container that they're in, as well as the result. But I guess you could tailor a search, any search result to be able to show that you've got the breadcrumbs. So it doesn't yes. have to be the PNP search, but yeah. Yeah, definitely possible. You can either use the PNP search um, at to have custom. So if you want it to be like super custom the way that you want it, um, or like they were mentioning, you can set up your <laughs> metadata so that, you know, when you look, it's a little bit more tailored. And so you actually know like what's in what, what folder, what's associated with what document. Um, or if you want to get really super fancy, you can have custom pages and you can create your own custom um, views the way that you want to see them. I 100% agree with that. But I think the biggest thing people try to do here is they try to mirror their network drive that they had before and they've got folders upon folders upon folders. And my best practice that I usually share is that if this were in a paper world, you would have a file cabinet, you'd have a hanging, you know, you have a drawer, you have a hanging file and you have a manila folder. You would never put a manila folder inside of a manila folder inside of, you will never find anything. So think that way, how can we level your file Flatten. cabinet? Flat to that, you know, that philosophy and then use, like Sharon was saying, use the metadata to, to refine the things about each of those types of documents that you want to look for and then create views around those. Cause you have a view limit of 5,000. That's still too much. People can't consume 5,000 documents at a time. We need to give them usable content and dumping things in folders upon folders upon folders is not usable. Yeah, it's easier for admins to migrate things from file shares to that kind of structure. So that helps propagate it even more. It's, you, you know, that this whole scenario, it reminds me of back in the the old data warehousing you know era where, I mean, storage was super expensive and all of our internal customers, me being IT, we'd create these marts that were subsets of the data that were specialized for the audience to go so that it would improve the performance of their searches, their queries and the various tools that they need to go and use. Um, and, and so there, there's still ways to optimize that depending on the architecture, the audience, the type of data that they're accessing um, for most out of the box search experiences. I'm working on, I'm a project manager that's sitting in one of m multiple locations. I'm really only looking for content within my purview of my location, the projects that I'm working on, you really don't need to have anything other than the out of the box search, which you can still tweak and 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 improve upon that experience. Um, but if you're talking about a a group of users that need more deep research across massive archives, then I don't know this is the right path at all. And so it's the as we love telling people, it depends on the audience and what you're actually trying to accomplish. I've seen really nice company-wide uh, search 
experiences where they've got the slicers and the, all the refiners and, and things that are in there, but they've structured it so that kind of like, as you said, Jerry, the, the organize it in a way that I can go to exactly the result pages. If I know I'm looking for content from this group of archives over in the marketing world, I can go to that page and it has like the common results. It's set up to specifically do an in-depth search into those <laughs> content silos. Well, I think the other big question that city owners, do you really need all that stuff? When I think my favorite story, I, I had a, a office assistant and she was saying, I need everything. I, I absolutely need everything. All the and time said, and instantly. Yeah. Redundant, outdated or trash, get rid of it. It's called rot. But what she was hanging on to, I'm like, really? You need the potluck sign up from 1994. <laughs> you, you need that file. Well, why do you need that file? Um, it had clip art that she liked, Sherry. Come just, on. Just in case she needs to remember what somebody brought. Oh, yeah. boy. Food allergies yeah. are serious, Sherry. I'm surprised <laughs> you're not taking that seriously. You're like, you need to retain that. <laughs> yeah, there's so, so many, you, there's so many really better ways it. to architect that. So yeah. many better ways to architect that. To your point, Sherry, like there's so many better ways to do this than just having everything in folders and keeping everything in folders. I know one of the things that we're doing is moving forward. You know, a lot of our our clients are coming to us and saying that I, I read in this difficult to locate files. Um, and so I think Christian was saying earlier is can you target it around a specific use case? So if it's a specific user or specific role that needs a specific thing, maybe instead of having everything in folders, switch it to document libraries that are targeted towards a role and then maybe even do something crazy, like put an image or a button on the page that says, click on this button to find these types of things. And then once it's in that library, then use your metadata to sort it so that they're already focused on a very specific um, piece of information. And now they're just having to filter a small amount. Yeah. My concern guys is, is, yeah, is always, it's not so much that, but what happens then is end users sync it to their desktop. Yep. So any of those benefits are absolutely out the window when it comes to then searching and what that actually looks like. You're creating some complexity there that makes it very difficult. Um, the, I mean, the one positive of the sync to the desktop, apart from the fact that, you know, it's a file, it will come depends on how much you're syncing and what that looks like. Um, but you can do the right click and open the folder kind of thing as to the file location to find that file location if it's actually syncing to the desktop. But yeah, all that sort of search functionality really changes the moment you sync. And it happens all the time because people like to work from their desktop and not as much from the cloud. So really think about what that strategy then looks like. And as you said, you know, having it broken out by a role or some Something that's a little different in terms of its structure and hierarchy will really make a, a difference from a desktop environment too. Yeah, we I worked with a client a few years ago that had um, everybody was syncing to the same sales documents folder and we migrated it and they all kept syncing it. It was in somebody's OneDrive and somebody would delete something, would delete it for everybody, and then they'd somebody would restore it. And it's like we had to like stop who's yeah. syncing this file. Because we couldn't even move anything. It was all moving. They were all sinking at the same time. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, stop yeah. the madness. It's a that file. It's a storage based perpetual motion machine. <laughs> renewing itself and going. Is, is that is that one of those where SharePoint ate my file? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sounds like a Rube Goldberg cre creation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, maybe maybe you're going to use Copilot too. Do you know have to think about that? If you put in Copilot or building a Copilot studio over the top of it, I know, right? Do you know, can Copilot return these results a little bit easier for you when asking for your file location? And, you know, having that having that there to really simplify things by just asking the question. Just had to open up that that I bag of worms. Can we? <laughs> but well, one thing I would say, it's still so, valid I mean, we, though I at we, the moment. I, but I, you know, yes, you can use the PNP uh, modern search capability. Go and you know extend that that capability. Is it an admin you know experience that you're looking for to be able to go and find something, or you want every user you need to define that? But part of what needs to happen is, I mean, just for the nature of how this question is structured, 
I do think that, uh, and a lot of organizations that suffer this is, that suffer from this as we've kind of talked or, uh, about this is that there's clearly a reorganization of data that needs to be done, a cleanup of that, apply life cycle management, reduce the volume of the content that's in your archives. Um, I, I would, I mean, there's, there's, this is an ongoing battle. Um, the, the, the more and more storage that you have, the need to automate that so that you're not having to manually, not relying on users to have to go and, and archive those things. But yeah, do if you clean up, it's going to really impact the performance of whatever the search you know solution you put in place will be. I'm sure Bill is sorry he asked this question at this point. <laughs> it's good. We're just obviously, as you can tell, we're branching off into many topics under the search banner. Yeah. I mean, if they go and have a look even at the Microsoft 365 Knowledge Management um, site on the adoption.microsoft.com, you know, there's there's a bit of information there that might actually help them around some of that. And some of the functionality that's coming down the line because there's a lot of shifting and changing going on you know at the moment around how we how it surfaces information what it's doing copilot coming in you know between syntax and and, and this and that and there's a lot of structural stuff happening right now when you know you've got purview and you've got so maybe have a look at what's actually going on and then make the decision from us that kind of standpoint too because there's certainly plenty of other things that you could do Thank you.